thank you for the leadership development meeting tonight we're asking lord that you open our eyes to behold your revelation applicable to every life that will move us forward in the work of the lord in this new year in jesus name we're asking oh lord that your word will be inscribed printed on the tables of our hearts and every time we come to a crossroad or we go on in the journey of ministry that you have called us to your word will always come back to our consciousness in jesus name and the grace and the power the strength to be obedient to your word your grant unto every one of us in the pursuit of progress in the ministry grant us victory courage power strength fulfillment of your promise and progress in jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray amen we're coming to genesis chapter 21 and we're looking at verse 4 genesis chapter 21 reading from verse 4 and abraham circumcised his son isaac being eight days old as god had commanded him think about that verse and think about circumcision and think about the pride of the children of Israel. Look at the way they refer to all the nations, a nation of uncircumcised people. And then they refer to themselves, we are the circumcision of the Lord. I think they forgot something. That the person that is circumcised at the age of eight days cannot take any credit. I seek had no choice. I seek was circumcised when he was eight days old. And he couldn't take credit for that and say, I'm a circumcised man. The credit goes to Abraham that Abraham circumcised I seek at the age of eight days. And all through their history, from that time of the circumcision unto the New Testament, their joy, their pride, their boasting is that they were circumcised. And every one of those Israelites that were circumcised, all of them were circumcised at the age of eight days. And so no credit. In our lives, we need to know what to take credit for. We cannot take credit for our official appearance. We didn't produce that. That's because of daddy and mommy. We cannot take pride and take credit for our height, of our stature. That's because of mommy and daddy. We cannot take credit even for our brain. That's because of the genes between daddy and mommy, and then we are who we are. The only thing we can take credit in is the one that we ourselves submit and surrender unto the Lord. And then we have that skill. We have that training. We have that education. We have that ability because we are responsible for that. The children of Israel never learned the lesson that they could not take credit for the flesh circumcision. The only thing they could have taken credit for is the circumcision of the heart because then that will make them personally to decide and go to the Lord, surrender to the Lord, commit themselves unto the Lord, have their heart circumcised. They will have to pray, they'll have to consecrate they'll have to yield themselves they'll have to personally 
absolutely surrender unto the Lord and whatever happened then that had circumcision is what they could take credit for if they were to take any credit that's the reason why we're looking at this uh, verse today at the verse that talks about flesh circumcision which nobody can take credit for and then we now go to the heart circumcision which takes a decision from you takes a consecration from you and takes absolute surrender to the Lord from you that's the reason we're talking about heart circumcision in the new covenant heart circumcision in the new covenant we're looking at Genesis chapter 17 verse 10 in Genesis chapter 10 reading from verse 10 here is what the father God had told our father Abraham and he has said he was going to have a covenant with him he says in Genesis chapter 17 verse 10 this is my covenant which he shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee every man child among you shall be circumcised remember the father the parents that does that in obedience to the Lord the child at that young age had nothing to do with that look at verse 14 in verse 14 the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people he has broken my covenant. We now come to Deuteronomy chapter 30 and we're looking at verse 6. Here is the significant circumcision. Here is the one God himself was interested in. The one he was going to do. But then this will mean that the individual will have to come to God and surrender. My son, give me thine heart. My daughter give me thine heart and when we bring that heart to the Lord he circumcises that heart in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord look at that the circumcision of the flesh does not automatically make any of those Israelites to love the Lord, to fear the Lord, to obey the Lord. It is a circumcision of the heart that will make them to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Romans chapter 2, we're looking at verse 28. In Romans chapter 2 verse 28, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. He is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. He has been circumcised in the flesh. The first skin of the flesh had been removed, and that wasn't his consecration. It wasn't his commitment, and therefore, in the sight of God, that was to lead to another thing. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. You see the interpretation and you see the emphasis of the New Testament that which is circumcision outward in the flesh is not very significant in their relationship with God in preparing for eternity. Look at verse 29. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but that praise is of God the importance the indispensability and the significance of heart circumcision the topic again heart circumcision 
in the new covenant we're looking at three points here subtitles number one the necessity of heart circumcision in the old testament and the children of israel always overlooked that that heart circumcision the cleansing of the heart the taking away of the adamic nature the uprooting of the depravity the carnality in the heart that that was the important thing unto god they never realized the necessity <clears throat> of heart circumcision in the old covenant number two the nominalism to be nominal in name only not having the reality of well of good connection with the lord and not having what really matters in relationship with the lord the nominalism of hearts circumcised with only flesh heart uncircumcised with only outward conformity there's outward conformity i'm circumcised in the flesh and he is circumcised in the flesh and the other person is circumcised in the flesh and we have that uniformity and conformity outward conformity and yet the heart is uncircumcised we can tell that about many people in the church in our church and in other churches too nominal there are some outward things they conform to and because of those outward things they say i'm a member of this church i'm a member of that assembly i'm a member of that congregation but if it is only outward conformity that we can tell just like the children of Israel could tell about flesh circumcision if the inward work of grace has not been done if a change has not taken place if a transformation has not taken place if a transformation has not taken place if conversion has not taken place if the first work of grace has not been done real conversion and salvation that nominalism that outward conformity means nothing in the sight of god and then we go to god we have learned without holiness no man shall see the lord hath holiness and blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god and then we go to god that he will take whatever is in us in our heart in our spirit in our soul that will hinder us from seeing him on the final day we want him to take that away that is what matters outward conformity alone does not interest god he wants the work of grace to be done in our heart so we have the nominalism of hearts uncircumcised with only outward conformity number three is the new nature with heart circumcision in the new covenant now we come to the new covenant and circumcision of heart is the number one thing is the indispensable thing is what he wants done in the heart of everyone and it is that that takes us to the new heavens and the new earth it is that that takes us to the very presence of God because our hearts have been circumcised the new nature with heart circumcision in the new covenant let's come to number one number one is the necessity of heart circumcision even in the old testament they were not conscious of that they were not very thoughtful about that that the necessity the indispensability the importance of that heart circumcision was embedded in their covenant old covenant in Deuteronomy chapter 30 I'm reading from verse 6 and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart is the only one who can do it 
and is the one who has given the promise and is the one who can perform that neither Moses nor Aaron father or mother a parent or anyone who circumcised the heart all they can do is circumcise the flesh but the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed you cannot do it for your seed for your children and the circumcision of the flesh was only for the boys male children but the circumcision of the heart which God will do was for everyone men and women the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed and the reason is so that you will love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live look at verse 7 and then it says the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee verse 8 verse 8 then says and thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments circumcision of the flesh does not lead to obeying the Lord circumcision of the flesh does not lead to performing the will of God or of of committing ourselves to the commandments of the Lord. It is the circumcision of the heart that will make you to love God with all your soul, all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and then will make you to obey the voice of the Lord and to do all his commandments which I command thee this, this day. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the promise of heart circumcision. Number two, the purity through heart circumcision. Number three, the prayer for heart circumcision. Look at number one there, the promise of heart circumcision. Let's read that again, very important. The Lord thy God, the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God. We get saved before sanctification. We get the citizenship in the kingdom will become children of God, the Lord thy God, already you belong to his family, already you are a child of God, already he claims you that he is your God and you are his people. In the heart circumcision, salvation comes first. Conversion comes first. Being a citizen of the kingdom with evidence that you're a real child of God comes forth. And now that he is thy God, the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. Was the first commandment? was the summary of all the commandments of God hear O Israel that God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart with all thy soul with all thy strength with all thy mind that's the first commandment and the second commandment is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself to really and truly and honestly and deeply love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, your heart must be circumcised. And that was the commandment as well as the promise that God made to the children of Israel. It tells us in Ezekiel chapter 11, reading from verse 19, Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19 and I will give them one heart I the almighty God I the creator 
I, the Holy One, I, the one that has, he desires truth and purity and holiness in the inward man. He said, this is what I will do. Religion cannot do this. And the priest cannot do this. And all their system, sacrificial system cannot do this. Here is what God alone can do. I will give them a say, promise, the promise of heart circumcision. I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within you and I will take the stony heart out of your flesh. That is the circumcision of the heart. In the fleshly circumcision, they will take the extra skin, the false skin out of that child. But now in the heart circumcision, the stony heart, the stubborn heart, the adamant heart, the wayward heart, the depraved heart, the carnal heart, the heart that is bent to doing evil, the heart that is attracted, having propensity to evil, God says, I will take that heart out of your flesh and will give them a heart of flesh, soft, submissive, and giving to the Lord I will give them the heart of flesh. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says that they may walk in my statutes. The circumcision of the flesh did not really give them all the grace they needed to walk in the statutes of the Lord. And so God said, I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to circumcise their heart and they will walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them that they shall be my people and I will be their God. It tells us in chapter 36 of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36 from verse 25 then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. That is salvation. That is the first work of grace. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, a new heart also, 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 is not only salvation, there's sanctification. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And then in Colossians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 11. Colossians chapter 2 verse 11, whom also, in whom also, that's in Christ, ye are circumcised, look at this, with the circumcision made without hands. New Testament. Christ is what he does. The fleshly circumcision has to be done with hand. They have to take a knife and cut off that extra flesh. They do that with hand. But the hand circumcision in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sins. The origin of sin, the root of sin, in putting up the nucleus, the thing that generates sin, that's the heart circumcision, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. The circumcision of Christ, that is heart circumcision and the Lord gave the promise in the old covenant and also give the promise in the new covenant. Look at number two here. Number two here the purity through heart circumcision. Purity through heart circumcision for us to be pure within as without for us to have inward purity, inner purity, heart purity 
for us to have purity that God would look at and say the heart is pure the mind is pure the thoughts are pure the will is pure every internal thing is pure in the sight of God that's exactly what that heart circumcision does look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God fleshly circumcision is not enough outward conformity is not enough our heart must be purified by Christ himself through his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary Acts chapter 15 verse 9 in Acts chapter 15 verse 9 and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith that's Peter recollecting what happened in the house of Cornelius Peter a Jew was circumcised in the flesh Cornelius a Gentile was not circumcised in the flesh the Jews and the Gentiles they were divided by that great divide this one circumcised in the flesh that were not circumcised in the flesh and Peter said you know what God put no difference between us Jews and them Gentiles between us the circumcised and them the uncircumcised because it's purified our hearts by faith and think about it that's exactly what matters circumcision or uncircumcision is nothing but the circumcision of the heart that gives us purity of heart by faith in first timothy chapter one reading from verse five now the end of the commandment the goal of the commandment the purpose of the commandment and the destination of the commandment the commandment that the lord has given here is the purpose here is the goal is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfailed that's what matters the pure heart and then we're able to obey the commandments of God without any hindrance and without anything pulling us back and that's why Jesus gave himself Titus chapter 2 reading from verse 14 who gave himself for us now we are saved was saved by the sacrifice of Christ on Calvary but then he gave himself for us the church that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify there is redemption there is salvation apart there is conversion apart but then there's a second work of grace there's purity to purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works let's come to number three here number three is the prayer for heart circumcision the prayer for heart circumcision the Lord had given the promise. Have you noticed? Every promise of God, whether of salvation, whether of healing, whether of sanctification, every promise of God will lie dormant until we wake it up by prayer. Until we say, I've seen the promise. I accept the promise. I want the fulfillment of the promise in my life. And then we go to God in prayer and we pray for the fulfillment of that promise. Look at Psalm 51, reading from verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. After we are saved, we should still understand that what goes on in the inward part the thoughts that go on there, the ideas that go on there, and the self-will that is inside there, and the coloration of 
things that go inside there even though outwardly there is conformity to the normal christian life but the inward parts are very important behold that desire is truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part the thing that is hidden from my neighbor hidden from my wife hidden from my husband hidden from members of the church hidden from everybody the lord sees everything and he desires truth and he desires honesty and he desires holiness in the inward part Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, purge me with Aesop. That's prayer. That's prayer. He can do it. He will do it. But then we need to go to God in prayer. Purge me with Aesop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Now, when you are saved, though your skins cease be as scarlet. He will wash you and you'll be as white as snow. He'll wash you, you'll be as pure, as good as wool. But now you come, you're not, you're not satisfied being white outwardly as snow. But now you want to be whiter than snow. Wash me and wash me thoroughly and cleanse me and purge me and i shall be whiter than snow look at verse 10 in verse 10 create in me a clean heart it's all right to live the normal life outward conformity to the standard of you know how you live how you talk how you walk how you dress what you eat what you don't eat what you drink what you don't think drink and what you don't smoke that's outward but now in the heart create in me a clean heart oh god and renew a right spirit within me he was praying for the heart circumcision we must pray the promise is given and it promises that there will be purity of heart with that heart circumcision. Now the prayer in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. Ezekiel 36, 26, a new heart also will I give you. Now, if somebody promised you, I'll give you a new car, and you've not got it, and you know it's sincere, you know he has the means, you know he can do it, don't you go to him and gently remind him, I just want you to remember this is what you promised me in your car. If somebody promised you a new dress, wouldn't you sometimes go back? If it has not come, I just want to gently remind you, I'm waiting for the new dress. And when God promises a new heart and a new spirit, why don't we go back to him, see the condition of the heart, and see the propensity of the heart, and the direction in which the heart is going. And then you are reminding him, you are saying, this is what you promised, and you are not a man that you will lie. Not that the son of man that will repent or change your mind. Have you said, will you not do it? Have you spoken? Will you not bring it to pass? And then you are telling the Lord, if there's anything in me that is hindering the fulfillment of the promise of the heart circumcision, you take everything out of the way so that God can do what he has promised. A new heart also will I give you. And in new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. You must know the condition of your heart. Stone is heavy. And in that thing, it gives you heaviness of heart. You're a Christian, but you are dragging yourself. You're a Christian, but there's something that will not leave the heart, and it is heavy that you will know. Stone is hard. If you know, well, uh, I know myself. I'm born again. I'm a child of God, but I know that I am hard. I am tough. Our leaders don't have to tell me. The pastor, the GS, doesn't have to tell me. I know 
I am hard that the stony heart right there. And the stony heart is impenetrable. The stone is impenetrable. You can cut something, you can pinch it and all that. The stony heart is impenetrable. And you know, you hear the word of God, you hear the word of God, and if it is not penetrating, I'm sure I'm saved. I'm sure I'm a child of God, but there's something that happens when I hear the word of God, it bounces back. I say, uh-huh, I hear that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm a man of my will, a man of myself. That's a stony heart there. And the Lord is saying, I will take away. When it takes away, it will no more be there. Do you see how two stones, when you knock them together, how they spark fire? Do you see how they make sound? And do you see how one will not bend to the other? If A has a stony heart and B has a stony heart and they are relating together, you see the spark, you see the commotion, and the Lord doesn't want that in our nature. And so he says, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you an heart of flesh. That's the promise. Look at the prayer. Look at verse 37. In verse 37, thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to wait for them to appreciate that heart circumcision. I'm going to wait for them to desire that heart circumcision. I'm going to wait for them, for them to know that they cannot live with me forever in heaven until that stony heart is taken away. And I want to wait for that realization. So they come and they ask me, thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the, by the house of Israel to do it for them. First Thessalonians chapter 5, we're reading from verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. When you are born again, you abstain from evil. But then, appearance of evil. Many people will say, whatever other people think, that's their business. What I do, I know it's not evil. It's an appearance of evil. Don't tell me. I will judge for myself. You know, when we're sanctified, it helps us to see that it is not just the evil, the appearance of evil, abstain. You joyfully, cheerfully, happily, wholeheartedly, sincerely, honestly abstain from all appearance of evil. And then in verse 23, and uh, I pray, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, not partially, entire sanctification. And I pray, that's the prayer, I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be preserved blameless. Sanctification, heart circumcision preserves us. It is not a temporary thing. I got, uh, you know, that experience at that time. I had the word of God. I jumped at it. I rejoiced at it. But it soon evaporates because that Adamic nature is still there. It still drags you back down to the level you were at that time before the joy and the excitement came but when the heart is circumcised it circumcises us it purifies us it purges us so that that blemish uh, that blamelessness will continue until the coming of our lord jesus christ i pray it will be affected in every heart every life in jesus name Look at number two now. Number two is the nominalism of hearts uncircumcised with only outward conformity. The children of Israel, once again, remember, 
And while we're seen, we are circumcised. We are the children of Abraham. And that Philistine is uncircumcised. Who is the uncircumcised Philistine that they should defy our God? But you know, circumcision of the flesh eventually became a nominal thing that they did. That didn't make any difference between their lives and the lives of the uncircumcised. And so, and as I was considering this, look at Romans chapter 2, verse 25. In Romans chapter 2, verse 25, for circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. If your heart is circumcised, and you are able to keep the word of God, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all of thy mind, circumcision then will be profitable. But if thou be a breaker of the law, that circumcision is made on circumcision. If thou be disobedient and rebellious, and if thou be a rejecter of the word of God and you cannot live by the word of God from the inward from your heart you cannot be obedient to the word of God from your heart then this circumcision the fleshly circumcision is made on circumcision we're looking at three things here number one the negation of flesh circumcision by heart uncircumcised. Number two, the neutralization of formal character by heart unconverted. And then number three, the no more fleshly corruption after heart conversion. Let's look at number one. In number one, the negation of flesh circumcision by heart on circumcised in jeremiah chapter 6 reading from verse 10 jeremiah chapter 6 verse 10 to whom shall i speak and give warning that they may hear behold their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hurt him behold the word of the lord is unto them a reproach they have no delight in it these were jews children of abraham and these were the nation of israel that jema was sent to jema uh, was sent to them and he said their ear is uncircumcised they're circumcised in the flesh but they're not circumcised in their heart in their ear in their mind and they're not obedient to the word of god in fact they have no delight in it when somebody finds himself although he is a reputed member of the church and he has outward conformity and when you look at him you say that's a sister and if you look at her you say that's a that's a sister you look at him that's a brother but there's no delight in the word of god talk about sanctification no delight talk about holiness without which no man shall say the lord there's no delight talk about obedience to the word obedience from the heart to the teaching of the word of god talk about the things we have to do and the way we have to go and the line we have to tow and the direction we have to go he's not interested but he says i'm a member of the church that's a canal member that's a nominal member that's a person that has only the only thing is the outward dress and the outward appearance and that outward conformity like the circumcision of the children of Israel that's enough but there's no delight in the world. look at verse 13 in verse 13 it says for from the least of them even unto the greatest of them everyone is giving to covetousness circumcised in the flesh but they're giving to covetousness and from the prophet even even unto the priests, everyone dealeth falsely. Think about that. Their priests, or oh, the priests were circumcised, and their prophets, the prophets were circumcised. But the only thing is that they dealt falsely. And he didn't count that as anything. That has become part of their character. 
part of their inner disposition that they dealt falsely and they traded in deception circumcision means nothing the outward conformity means nothing when the people they were not men and women of truth they were not men and women of integrity they were not men and women of honesty they dealt falsely it tells us in verse 14 verse 14 tells us they have healed also the daughter and the, the heart of the daughter of my people slightly saying peace peace when there's no peace oh they said are you circumcised in the flesh? Yes, I am. Peace. Everything is all right. My brother, it is deception. These outward conformity were not like another denomination. We're not like that other church. We're not like that. And the way we judge, whether we are right or wrong, is by outward appearance. And then we say, peace, peace. We say, when the rapture takes place and the trumpet is sound, I sounds, and then the, the dead, they are raised. We of deeper life will be the number one to go. I don't know about that. If you are judging that by outward appearance, we don't wear this, we don't wear that, we don't drink that, we don't smoke that, and then this is the way we move, and then we're evangelistic, we labor, we're very active. If you're judging by outward things, you are wrong. It is the heart that matters. And so they were telling them, say, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No. Their circumcision, they thought, will speak for them. Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall at the time that I visit them. They shall be cast down, says the Lord. And then in verse 16, verse 16, thus says the Lord, stand ye in the way, in the way, see and ask for the old paths where is the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your soul the lord will say drop this bracken on flesh circumcision have your heart circumcised stand in the way and see and ask for the old path where is the good way the narrow way that leads to heaven get out of the broad way and you shall find rest for your soul look at the stony heart responding but they said we will not walk therein the stony heart was still there the stubborn heart was still there look at chapter 9 of jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 9, we're reading from verse 25. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. Those who are circumcised in the flesh, they rest in that, that outward circumcision, I'll punish them exactly the same way i will punish the uncircumcised why verse 26 in verse 26 egypt and judah and edom and the children of ammon and moab is bringing together all of them with judah circumcised not circumcised and all that are in the uttermost corners that dwell in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart circumcised in the flesh not circumcised in the heart I'll punish them together with all those people that are not circumcised in the flesh I see them as the same. Acts chapter 7. In Acts chapter 7, verse 51, you stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart. If somebody is stiff necked 
if some circumcised in heart if somebody is walking for example he sees another person carrying a big pole and he knows that the sight or the height of the big pole is the, is like his forehead and he sees that and is coming and the fellow carrying the big pole is also coming and he says i never bench for anyone my neck is stiff and therefore i will not bend and he's walking and the other fellow too is walking that's uh, the edge of that pole will hit his forehead might even hit his eyes and it will fall down he will be injured but there are people that say I don't care the consequence I don't care what will happen this is what I will do and I will see the I see the big pole coming and it's going to knock him down but he doesn't care the chief neck is more important to him he must maintain his backbone even if he's going to be injured and died and then Stephen told them he revealed the truth to them he stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did so do ye and then in jeremiah chapter 4 the lord now is saying how long will this be how long will you look at the desire and the demand of the lord and see that this is what he wants jeremiah chapter 4 verse 3 thus says the lord to the men of judah and jerusalem break up your fallow ground so not among the thorns and then in verse 4 he says in verse 4 circumcise yourself unto the Lord and take away the first kings of your heart ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings let's come to number two here number two is the neutralization of formal character by heart unconverted the neutralization of formal character all that outward conformity outward character is neutralized because of the lack of conversion of the heart it tells us about Matthew chapter two, Matthew chapter 23 verse 25 want to you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter but within they are full of extortion and excess within within that's what god is looking at it says in verse 26 in verse 26 that blind pharisee cleanse first that which is within the lord is interested in heart circumcision what's within the cup and the platter that the outside of them may be clean also let the work of grace be done on the heart on the mind let the work of grace be done in your spirit verse 27 it says what to you scripts and pharisees hypocrites for ye are like unto whited sepulchre white and clean immaculate outside shining outside which indeed appear beautiful outward but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness in verse 28 it tells us even so ye also outwardly outwardly appear righteous unto men but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity will that excuse them 
in the, on the judgment day will they escape because they appear beautiful and somebody says I can vouch for sister so and so you know outwardly she knows how to relate with people unbelievers not to do that too politicians not to do that too they know how to hide what's inside their heart and to relate very well they're believable when they talk and when they campaign they're believable but then when they are voted for and they come in when they are outside before they come in and you're saying come come i like you i love you i want you i desire you they're good and they hide all those when they come in then all those things in their heart begin to show that's like the children of israel and that's like those pharisees and sadducees outwardly they appeared righteous and they appeared beautiful but within they're full of hypocrisy and iniquity look at verse 33 in verse 33 it says ye serpents and ye generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell. Let's come to number three here. Number three is the no more fleshly corruption after heart conversion. When we come to the Lord, there is a no more, no more, no more. The fleshly corruption is gone and now we have the heart conversion we're looking at john chapter 5 verse 14 look at the no more here after what jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him behold thou art made whole sin no more that's the no more after we're converted after heart conversion has come no more Lest a worse thing come unto thee. John chapter 8, verse 11. It says, She said, No man, Lord, as no man condemned you, no man, Lord. Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. There is a no more after we have heart conversion. In Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 9. Romans chapter 6 verse 9. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Christ is raised from the dead so he dies no more. Death has no more dominion, no more, no more, no more dominion over him. And then in verse 10, it tells us, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Verse 11, he says, likewise, as he dieth no more, and then death has no more dominion over him, you yourself now, as there is heart conversion, it says, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, so that there is no sin anymore and alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then in verse 12, it says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey each in the Lord's thereof. Verse 18, in verse 18, it says, Being made, being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Verse 22, it says, Be now, being made free free from sin and become servants to God have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life we we'll come to point number three in point number three the new nature with heart circumcision in the new covenant uh, we're coming to romans chapter 2 reading from verse 28 it says in verse 28 for he is not a jew which is one outwardly neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh verse 29 in verse 29 but he is a jew which is one 
inwardly and circumcision is that of the heart and of the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men and but of God whose praise is not of men but of God now we're not seeking heart circumcision to be praised of men in fact if you have heart circumcision and you're honest to the core and you're truthful to the core and you say the truth that is in your heart and your healing man is a righteous man a holy man a forthright man a courageous man a person that stands in righteousness and holiness whatever other people think and you carry that to your place of work and you carry that to the marketplace and you carry that to your community and you live that life that is spotless and blameless and pure and holy with heart circumcision demonstrated in everything you do everywhere you go people are going to be opposed to you because they don't like that kind of cleanliness from within and kind, that kind of honesty from within their own integrity is for sale but your own integrity is not for sale. Your own experience of this uh, circumcision of heart, your experience is not for sale. They, they can sell off their character. They can sell off all, their, all the good, good things they have when they see what they want to get. But if you are going to live and you say, my holiness, my integrity, my new nature, my pure heart is not for sale. Whatever people will say, however people will react, this is what I got from the Lord. And I will take it anywhere and everywhere. Your praise will not be of men. They won't praise you. They won't congratulate you. They won't befriend you. You might even lose some friends if you've been trading together in dishonesty. You've been trading in a lack of integrity. And, uh, you know, you do it for them. You cover them. They do it for you and they cover you. But now you say, I want purity, holiness in the inner man. And you've got it. And you live like it and live for it your praise will not be of men you might have more frowns you might have more people that will disagree with you you might have more people that will push you away they can't be friend they can't talk they don't know because if you talk to him you might bring it out in conversation when he's talking to another person because it's not going to hide gossip anymore because of that you're going to lose friends but their praise is of God and that's what God wants in our lives that we go to God and we live a life we say Lord give me the life that is spotless the life that is blameless the life that is transparent and I will not care who befriends me I will not care who persecutes me and then God gives you that clean heart your praise will not be of man your praise will be of God three things number one the prophecy for partakers of the new covenant number two the provision and possession of heart circumcision and number three the power and the pursuit with heart circumcision look at the promise the prophecy now in jeremiah chapter 31 reading from verse 31 behold the days come says the lord that i will make a new covenant for the house of israel and with the house of Judah. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, it says, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their inward hearts. I will cleanse their inward hearts. 
I'll take the hardness and the stubbornness away from their heart and I will put our right, my law, in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. In Hebrews chapter 8, we're reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 But now as you obtained a more excellent ministry By how much also he is a mediator of a better covenant Which is established, which was established upon better promises Verse 8, in verse 8 it says For finding fault with them He says behold the days come Says the Lord when I will make Make a new covenant with the house of Israel and for the house of Judah. And then he tells us in verse 10, it says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord, says the Lord, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people when he circumcises our hearts in this new dispensation he writes his word his law his demand his desire upon our hearts so we cannot say I didn't know I didn't think like that I wasn't meditating on that. I wasn't interpreting it like that. You are the one interpreting the word of God like that. You are the one that is showing, demonstrating it like that. I wasn't thinking like that. If the same word that is reaching on my heart is reaching on your heart, and it is the Lord himself at the point of heart circumcision, that wrote that in your heart and in my heart will walk in the same way, will talk the same way, will live the same way because the same word is written on our heart in the new covenant. Look at number two there. Number two there, we're looking at the provision and possession of heart circumcision it tells us in um, second peter chapter 1 verse 3 it says according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness if he has given unto you all things that pertain unto godliness inside your heart in your spirit in your soul in your mind and the Holy Spirit is there, keep on guiding you and to keep on reminding you what will live to please the Lord. He says he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. In verse 4, he tells us whereby a given unto us, not just Assuming in a definite sense, as we have seen the promise of God, and we've seen the faithfulness of God, and we've gone to pray before the Lord, then he says he has given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Partakers of the divine nature. The bird flies because God gave that bird the nature to fly. The fish swims in the sea because God has given that fish the nature to swim. And all created beings, they act the way they act because God gave them that nature. It says in the same way, when we're saved, and then we come to God and our hearts are circumcised. He gives us the divine nature. Now, the divine nature is honest. 
is righteous, is holy, is fearless. The divine nature is straightforward, not crooked, not fraudulent. The divine nature is truthful. The divine nature is holy, 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 holy unto God Almighty is holy and righteous entirely and he says as we come to him this is what he will do he will give us the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust the place i'm walking you know they are so corrupt and if you try to straighten out things and you will not sign any document that you know wants to be fraudulent they all of them will be at you they say that same coming that's her coming prophet so and so a preacher pastor so and so they will then they find out which church you are going deep alive you have come okay come and then come and look at her books you are the accountant you are the policeman you are the prosecutor you are the executor you are the everyone holy holy deep alive. come come and look at what we are doing it will not sign and then when all of them are shooting the word at you you say what am i going to do now well if you have come to the lord and you have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Your integrity will not be for sale. There will be no price on your honesty. There will be no price on what you are to do for the Lord. And even the people of the world, they know things that are not for sale. And there are some, you know, writers that will tell those young people, they say, this is not for sale. That is not for sale. And you will tell yourself as God himself abides in you. That your life, your holiness, your integrity, and your and your honesty, Honesty will not be for sale at any price because you have the nature of God, of God in you. We're coming to uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 72. It says to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. That's the new covenant. And then it says in verse 73, it says, The oath which is swear to our father Abraham, verse 74, that he would grant us that we might be delivered from the hand of our enemies and might serve him without fear. You know, when you get sanctified and when he removes that thing on the inside that looks more at man rather than at God, he'll take away that slavish fear. And that fear that makes you to forget heaven and forget the calling of God upon your life. And you're always thinking of what they will do. There'll be persecution. What will they do? What they'll do will not be more than persecution. And you fear God more than the persecutor. And you say, I thank God this that circumcision I, I have got. I will not trade it for anything. And so he delivers us. And we serve him without fear in verse 75 in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives he will do it i said he will do it look at number three there number three there the power and pursuit with heart circumcised the heart is now circumcised and then you have the power to walk in the way of the Lord and to stand for what he wants you to stand for. Luke chapter 24 verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. If we're too much in a hurry after hearing the message, it enters the ear and goes to the head. If we don't pray about it, we don't have time. Our city is a crowded city, a busy city. And the physical thing is more important. We must get back home in time. So God, we're sorry you have spoken, we have heard you. But we don't have time to pray. 
and transfer what we have heard to our heart. There's no time to say, God, we know how important the circumcision of heart is to you. We love you. We respect you. We honor you. We appreciate you. And we appreciate the gift you have given. Your only begotten son. And you want to give us that divine nature. And you want to circumcise our heart and take away the stony flesh, the Adamic nature, and give us the very heart and the mind of Christ. We love that. And because of that, we'll spend time with you. You are our desire. You are the one that we love most in life. And therefore, we're going to spend time and pray. If we don't do that, we'll hear about heart circumcision, but it will not yield any fruit. It will yield fruit in your life. And behold, I said, the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. He'll give us that power. And then we'll pursue what he wants us to do in the power of the new life that he gives us. Think about this. New covenant. In the new covenant, there is the new creature. He makes us new creatures. We'll not be acting and living like we were living before. Now we come into the experience of the new covenant, new creature, new life. It comes to us and the life we now live. In the grace of God, the life we now live is a new life. Think about that. In the new covenant, there is the new nature the new nature that he gives us now that is able to walk in the new path and the new way in the way he has ordained for us in the new covenant there's a new spirit it says a new spirit will i put within you in the new covenant there is a new heart it says our heart is now totally new will not be thinking will not be planning will not be going in the old way in the new covenant there's a new mind we have the mind of christ that the mind of christ is now imparted into us and the way the son loved the father that's the way we love the father in the new covenant there's a new tongue there's a new language the way we talk the way we reason and the way we converse everything is totally different now there's a new tongue and there is a new language in the new covenant it says there's a new thought my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways says the Lord as the heaven is higher than the earth so is my thought higher than your thoughts and our thoughts are the things that control us but not because we get into the experience into the benefit of the new covenant there is new thinking there is new thought because we come into the, into the new covenant there's a new act there's a new action there's a new habit you see, our acts determine our actions. Our actions will determine our habits. But now we come to the Lord and we say, Lord, I thank you that this new covenant is a possible experience, it's a present experience, and it's a possess, it's a possessed experience. And therefore, we can have new acts and new action and new habits as we come to the new 
covenant into the experience and the enjoyment of the new covenant now there is a new power now there is a new there is a new strength and we now can walk in the way of the Lord the strength we didn't have before we have that strength now because there is a new power and a new strength in the new covenant we have a new name he gives us a new name and the old name that attached us to the old line everything is taken away and now we have a new name the Lord is saying he is willing he is able he wants to do it for us and he says I the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed that will love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind if you be willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land I will eat the good of the land will make progress together. The power of the Lord will come afresh upon our lives in Jesus' name. The secret is in the new covenant and the secret is in the heart circumcision that the Lord will do for us. He'll do it for you. He will do it for you. Anywhere, everywhere you go, you'll not be carrying the old, heavy, stony, stubborn heart. But now a new heart is given to you and your life and your ministry and your disposition. Everything about you will become totally new in Jesus' name. Am I there? I said, are you there? Why don't you rise up and tell the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. I want this new heart. I want this new spirit. I want this new mind. I want this new name. I want this new commitment. I want to live. I want to walk by the new commandment. I want this new consecration. I want this new nature. Do it, O oh Lord, for me. And then this life this year will be totally different in your life in Jesus name open your mouth and talk to the Lord and pray in faith